The October 12th, 2018 meeting of EAH is officially convened. I don't see any guests. Oh, any new business? Any old business? Any humor from a man on the throne? In my travels of the, on the highways and byways of this great nation, I... <clears throat> Noted a lot of wise advice, usually on the those uh, little signs outside of churches. And, you know, if it's dark out there, it's the sun is in here, that kind of thing. This, this one had a little engineering twist to it. The fact that there is a highway to hell and only a stairway to heaven says a lot about the anticipated traffic numbers. <laughs> So our speaker today, among other great accomplishments, is a way, way, way advanced uh, Toastmaster, former area governor, hardly get any uh, higher than that. And he's a Punahou boy who ended up <clears throat> getting his university education in at Creighton University. And he did environmental science as an undergrad, and then for some reason that I will never fathom, went to law school came back and said, no, no, my heart is in environmental sciences. And he has a very distinguished career now with DLNR. Anybody know what DLNR is? Very good, very good. Bring it up, Patrick T. All right, I'm here to talk to you today about my current project, which is restoring Lehua Island. Um, it is a small island. Um, well, um, I can tell you a little bit about, about it. Uh, it's past, present, uh, future. It's a small island. Here, I made a little video. Let's see if it'll go. Um, 140 miles northwest of Oahu, 19 miles west of Kauai, and three quarters of a mile just north of Niihau. Uh, more than likely, it was connected to Niihau at some point. Uh, if you can imagine, it's a tuft cone, uh, much like Hanama Bay or uh, Diamond Head. And if you can imagine, if Diamond Head were cut off from Oahu, that's what it would look like. Um, and uh, you know, the prevailing, you know, this is, you know, north is that way. Uh, the prevailing winds and whatnot, they kind of eroded away that side of the, the volcano at that, at that point. So. In any case, um, kind of layers and layers and layers of, of ash and compressed rock uh, created this uh, almost 700 feet, well, over 700 feet tall island. It's uh, 285 acres. Um, it's it's not super big, but it's not small either. And th th there's a lot of reasons why, uh, one of the reasons why we want to restore it. So, brief history. So, Lehua is a volcanic tuft cone, as I said. Uh, archaeologically, uh, there have been surveys suggesting that Hawaiians likely visited Lehua for ceremonial and fishing purposes, uh, but they never really set up an habitation there. So, um, more than likely, that's also the time when the rats got there, <laughs> uh, because the only rats that happen to be there are Polynesian rats. Yep. Um, the Lehua Island was transferred to the United States federal government in the early 1900s, and in 1931, the U.S. Lighthouse House Corps, which uh, got subsumed into the U.S. Coast Guard, um, took responsibility of Lehua Island and installed a gas-powered lighthouse at the summit. Uh, the lighthouse was later replaced by an electric navigational beacon and currently a solar-powered beacon of which you can see a few boobies sitting on it right there. <laughs> so uh, they, they fight over that, that uh, spot because it is literally the highest point on the island. So, um, so in 2004, the Lehua Island was considered by local, federal, and state and uh, uh, nonprofit organizations for restoration. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. So. So why restore Lihua? Well, it is one of Hawaii's most important seabird breeding islands because of its size. Um, it, it rises over 700 feet uh, above sea level, and most 
Hawaiian seabird breeding islands are low elevation atolls. If you can imagine Midway Atoll, it only raises up over the ocean about six feet, and that's it. So as you know, climate change happens and sea level rise happens, a lot of these low uh, islands will probably disappear uh, much of the year. So having a high island like Lehua uh, for seabirds is uh, a very important thing for those species to continue. Yeah. So uh, Lehua Island is federally owned, as I said, by the Coast Guard and is already protected as a state designated seabird sanctuary and managed by the Department of Land and Natural Resources. So the island has been plagued, unfortunately, with Pacific rats, uh, rats excellence, that uh, they prey on seabird eggs, nestlings, nest, uh, nesting adult seabirds. Uh, so even though there are you know, a, a rough estimate of 50,000 uh, seabirds that you know, try to nest on the island, a lot of them uh, perish uh, in doing so. <laughs> so that's the reason why we're trying to get rid of the rats. Um, right now, almost none. So that, that's part of the story. But um, So what have we done? Well, in 2005, 2006, we eradicated the rats. There were actually uh, rabbits. There were um, European rabbits. There were these, it was, it was funny, they were kind of these, like, you know, the black and white cow splotched. Uh, rabbits, but they had been let loose, uh, and they were actually chewing down most of the. <laughs> we don't know, <laughs> uh, but somebody. But uh, yeah, they they were very. Their genetics were very small uh, band of, of genetics. So many of them were mutants. In fact, uh, a lot of them had issues uh, when they were overexcited. They were you know, kind of. Uh, they would uh, they would have seizures and and then fall asleep. So um, they were an interesting bunch of rabbits. But uh, we got rid of them in 2006 with the aid of dogs uh, and people with shotguns. Uh, and then in uh, 2009 we tried to eradicate the rats um, and failed. It was uh, there are a number of reasons why it didn't work, uh, but they went out there with uh, rodenticide uh, during the winter time, uh, which is probably not the best time to do it, but you know, nonetheless, it, it did not work. A few years later, we put together a feasibility study seeing whether or not we could try and attempt it again and also, of course, look at our mistakes and say, how can we do it better? Well, actually, it wasn't the Department of Land and Natural Resources per se that did it. It was actually the Fish and Wildlife Service and the U.S. Department of Agriculture that uh, did that initial eradication effort. So um, in 2013 to 2016, the Lehua Steering Committee, including the Department of Land and Natural Resources, Fish and Wildlife Service, Island Conservation, the Robinson family, and uh, a number of other stakeholders uh, got together and decided, okay, we're going to try and do this again. And so we raised funds and we did it. In 2017, we went out there uh, with a helicopter and uh, a whole bunch of difastinone bait, and we uh, passed over the island on three different days over uh, a couple of weeks, and got rid of probably 99% of them. But uh, unfortunately, things did not go completely as, as planned. But anyway, oh, this is what the operation looked like. Uh, we we staged it off of Niihau. This is the helicopter. Um, this is there's a this is what the hopper looks like. Um, and they just take the you know, uh, bait put in here, and then they fly along. Well, I'll show you a, a picture of Lehua later, but um, they actually have a GPS, and they, they paint, essentially, lines along the island um, and uh, make sure that they cover every inch of it. So, so um, after we... Well, actually, before and during the operation, we would do various monitoring things. Uh, this is our target, Polynesian rat or Pacific rat. And one of the things that we did was we actually put these tiny, tiny radio collars on them. <laughs> uh, so we, we caught a bunch of them uh, and we released them. And so we tried to make sure that they you know, uh, were, uh, we released them and then tried to find them again. And if they weren't moving anymore, then we knew that we had successfully gotten rid of them. So, uh, so that was kind of one of the things that we were doing. 
we used a, a bait called uh, Difastenone. Well, it was uh, called Ditrac. Officially, that's its brand name. But it's uh, got 50, uh, 50 parts per million Difastenone, which is the active ingredient. Difastenone is a, uh, of course, the bait was 99.995% in a cereal, uh, just food for them. But that small amount of Difastenone was enough to, to kill them. So. Well, the birds are most, the vast majority of them are seabirds. What they do is they go out to sea uh, and feed there and they come back and feed their young and whatnot. So eating on land is not really uh, something that they do. We did have some concern that some of the shorebirds, uh, like the colea and uh, ruddy turnstones, would be impacted. And there was only three uh, that we found that were impacted, you know, that had eaten some of uh, them. Well, they had probably eaten insects that had eaten some of the baits, and they, they perished, unfortunately. But, you know, it's not a population-level issue because there are, you know, millions of ruddy turnstones and uh, golden plovers out there. So, in any case, so what are we doing currently? Well, I wanted to say that even though we got rid of 99.99% of them probably, there's still a few of them that showed up on cameras, and I can show you some of that later. After doing the eradication, we put out uh, cameras, chew blocks, bait piles, tracking tunnels, commodity kill traps, uh, good nature automatic repeating traps, and live traps, all these different devices across the island in order to try and see whether or not the rats were still there. Actually, uh, we did some of it before and during, and we saw the, a, con a consistent drop-off, and only really now the, the cameras are, are the ones that are actually picking up anything. So we had some unfortunate post-operation rat sightings, a total of three coming between October and December of last year. And there's one of those buggers there. Uh, we have these reconnaissance cameras that you know, they, they have infrared night vision and you know, motion detection. So this is how we responded. Where the sightings were, we put in these, these bait grids. You'll see we, we, we have these bait stations filled with the, the same kind of bait that we used to cover the island uh, with before, but in a grid around those areas that we, we saw them. So this is kind of the, the mop-up mode, uh, trying to get the last of them. You can also see our uh, where we put, uh, initially, where we put our various devices to try and get rid of them and or at least detect them. Where did the this is a Polynesian rat. He doesn't burrow, right? They don't, well, I mean, Lehu Island is pretty darn rocky. They will find holes or use the birds' burrows if they, if they can find them. So, yeah, they don't usually live on the surface. They do try and find some place, uh, especially because Lehu Island pretty much has no trees. And so they try and find a refuge during the day so they don't fry. <laughs> They don't really dig for themselves. They'll find a crevice or something to try and stay in during the day. In other parts of the islands, they're like, more like Rattus Rattus, right? right? Yeah, the Lehua Island, uh, we only have the, the, the Rattus Exelon, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, we did, you know, tons of surveys of the island, and only one species of, of rodent uh, has made it over to Lehua, so. It must go back to pre-white man. Right. Uh, that's that's our surmise. I mean, we just don't know exactly, but it's more than likely that it was Polynesians that had, you know, uh, or Hawaiians that had at one point visited the island, and you know, these guys dropped, and jumped off, and uh, started a population. Nonetheless, uh, we're trying to get rid of them now. I can tell you. Um, so this this blue line here. Uh, tells you where it's, you know, we think is walkable, pretty much. All this area out here and here um, is really difficult for anyone. And we go out there with spiked boots to try and, you know, claw our way up the, the side of the mountain. I was actually helping, and I can talk about this a little more later if you want, um, I was helping lead a dog team uh, to try and find out the last, where their last rats were somewhere around here, and I fell uh, almost uh, 40 feet. Thankfully, I, I didn't die. Uh, I, I only broke this bone here, uh, but, uh, but still, quite the adventure. <laughs> 
Uh, so don't take this island lightly. <laughs> uh, it might kill you. So, As I was saying, uh, these are the kinds of things that we use. And this is a A24 good nature repeating trap. I don't know if your folks are familiar with it. It's from New Zealand. It's kind of cool. The rat comes along. It sticks its nose up here. And this uh, compressed air shoots a, a bolt uh, into the, the rat's head. And then it just drops out. <laughs> and it resets itself. And it can do it. The, the reason why it's called A24 is because it can reset itself up to 24 times. It's a good trap. Um, you can find it on Amazon if you like. And it's also got kind of things to protect it, other species from not say, they're sticking their head in there and, and getting killed. So. Is there a Yeah. So up here, there's there's a um, right now. I think it's kind of this chocolate uh, coconut bait. That's <laughs> uh, really effective at at drawing them in. And then uh, we have kamate traps. The good thing about them is that the rats, they have to come here, take the bait out, then the, the trap comes over and, and smacks them and, and kills them. Uh, this is a live trap. Uh, chew blocks are just mostly a monitoring thing. Uh, and then cameras, um, like this one, although it's kind of hard to see. But what's the connection between the one that shoots the so it, it, you know, we mount it up you know, on a vertical surface, uh, and then there's air in here. It's compressed air thing, and it, when the, when it's triggered, then the, the, the bolt comes out and smacks the rat. There's nothing electrical about it. It's all mechanical. Yeah, so the compressed air and this piston back here, and it, it shoots out, and then it, it hits the rat, and then once the rat is, is out of it, and then it resets itself and gets ready for the next one. So. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so the, you know, but the funny thing is, the rats—they don't really seem to be deterred. They're like, "Oh, look, you know, there's my buddy." Well, you know, sometimes they eat their buddies, uh, or sometimes they just crawl over them and say, "Hey, what's up there?" <laughs> and you know. this is our uh, camera monitoring. As you can see, we tried to get them across the island as much as possible. It's pretty amazing. You know, we had. Uh, some of these set up even before, and we had a lot of hits. This is a good indication. We had a lot of these things, tracking tunnels, whack chew blocks, you know, trapping cameras, bait piles, etc., where we saw, you know, saw the animals before the eradication, but afterwards, uh, September 17th on, we didn't see any of them. I mean, the only thing that's ever picked them up, and that doesn't really show much here, but is the cameras. So... We were very effective. I think that that's, you know, that's a good indication. Since our uh, eradication, we've had all these different things going on. You know, trap nights, meaning you know, how long overnight, because uh, we counted in nights because rats are mostly active during night, how much time that we've had these kinds of devices out there. And through all of that, we've only seen on camera rats nine times. So they're there, uh, but in extremely low low amounts. So so we're hopeful that we're, we're very close <laughs> to a full eradication. So, so there's still that poison on the island for the remaining rats to eat. Right. So that's what we're doing. I mean, when we see them on the cameras, then we go out there and we deploy bait grid. It's it's not, you know, spread across the island. It's just in these bait stations. It's a, you know, protected plastic thing. If you if you go to like McDonald's and you see these, you know, black <laughs> uh, housing things uh, sitting around the, the restaurant, that's very much like this. So it's not in the, out in the open for other animals to eat, but it's got little openings in them that the rodents seem to find reasonable to wander in. In fact, um, sometimes you find nesting material in the bait boxes. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's a great home, you know, good shelter. So that's what we're doing now. We've got cameras all over the island. We've got bait grids around where we see them. We've got the good nature traps uh, still along the spine here. Um, and we've got live traps that we use. Oh, uh, by the way, we camp down here. We've got all sorts of devices all across the island, and still we only rarely see them, and we actually haven't seen any rats since June. So we're very hopeful, crossing our fingers, uh, that a lot of the rats have either taken the bait that we give them, or they just you know, can't find each other and they just die. That's our big hope, at least.
what does the future hold for Lehu? Well, our, our main hope is that we will restore a lot of the plants and the seabirds. Many of them actually will restore themselves. We hear, we have these um, song meters across the island to try and you know, p- detect what kinds of birds are coming by. And there are a lot of endangered seabirds that actually fly over Lehua, but they either nest and are killed or they nest, or they nest someplace else. But eventually, um, once they you know, figure out that it's safe, uh, hopefully they will make the, themselves at home on Lehua. There also is potential for us to translocate some birds that you know, may be having a harder time on, say, Kauai or other places, or some of the, the smaller islands northwest of here, to you know, possibly uh, give them a home other than where it may disappear into the waves. That's my presentation. I am open for questions right now. So. <laughs> Sure. There are actually a suite of plants that, you know, we've been working with Keith Robinson, actually. He's, that's one of his passions, is plants. Um, and they, there's many a candidate from Niihau, actually. They more than likely would do well on Lehua, because Niihau is also similarly dry. And also, they have a lot of you know, ungulates and uh, rats and whatnot on their end, which... You know, if they're not around, they might do okay on Lehua. But yeah, it'll take a little bit to get a number of them established, but there are a lot of uh, drought-tolerant native plants. Uh, Some of them are, we may just try and establish more of the more common things, you know, various grasses, pohinahina, naupaka, you know, some of those things, just to get uh, some more native uh, shrubs out there. There is plenty of grass, no, non-native grass and shrubs that are out there right now, and it'll take a little work in order to try and get rid of some of those, but you know, at the same time, you know, we're thinking about how to make it so that the natives can take a, a, a bigger foothold. So. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any remote viewing it would be very uh, great for us to be able to do that, but it would also cost us significantly more. <laughs> we have to go to the island, and we go literally go to the camera, and we swap out the, the memory card and you know, put it back <laughs> and you know, hopefully position it right. Unfortunately, we go out there and we rely on volunteers and sometimes they don't position it right but you know what you know sometimes it's shooting at the sky and we're like no that's not going to help us find the rats unless they're flying rats but uh, you know that would be unusual thing um you know i i think that you know, we've seen let's see uh, we we've seen some rare birds, I mean, you know, some black-footed albatross wandering across were like, hey, we didn't know you were there, you know, so um, it's good to have those kinds of things out there give us kind of a sense of, of what's going on. Right now, it's actually rare to even see rats, so that's the good thing. Before this eradication happened, I could be in camp just sitting you know, around or, or waiting for you know dinner to be made, and then you know would see the rats kind of jumping around, jump up onto a plant, grab the flower, and then you know start eating it. Or like the, in in broad daylight, you know. So the fact that they aren't doing that now that's that's a significant change. So. Two questions. One, how how is camping on Lake Is there any flat spots? There are very few flat spots. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see. So um, our camp area is um, around here. We actually have a platform that, that we made, and there's there was this kind of, and we called it the, the weather port. It was this Quonset hut with a, kind of a plastic tarp over it. Right now, it's actually this kind of plastic prefab igloo. So, but it works, you know. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, you know, of course, 
getting sleep is another issue. The birds, they, they love to sing to each other all day, all night. You eventually get used to it. But yeah, uh, sometimes people, especially people who have children, they, they get a little disturbed because sometimes they sound like crying babies. So they're, they're like, wah, wah, wah. And you're like, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> so. Uh, um, we're usually going out there five to four, four to five days yeah, at a time, although when we did the eradication effort, I was there for you know, almost a month. Thankfully, we do have you know, some connection to the outside world. Verizon has you know, some wireless connection, so we can you know, call and you know, sometimes get a little bit of internet. But yeah, it's still pretty spare. Uh, we have to bring all our fresh water, you know, you know, water in an aquifer there. And we have to bring our own food, of course. But there's actually a lot of good snorkeling. Snorkeling and or fishing, it's allowed. In fact, anyone can come. Well, there's not much below high tide. If you ever want to see Lehu, there is actually a boat company or, or two. The one that we usually actually sometimes hitch a ride on is Holo Holo, and they actually have a snorkel tour. <laughs> um, I've only seen one, kind of a black tip, reef sharp, really small, but you don't want to try and swim between, even though it's only three quarters of a mile, you don't want to try to swim between Lehua and Niihau. It can be a little sharky, you know, so. What's the silent uses for target practice Thankfully, no. Um, this was one of the, the few that did not turn into a bombing range. I think you might be talking, thinking about Kaula Rock, which is south of Niihau. Of course, the other uh, big one that we all know about is Ko'olave. Uh, Lehua, thankfully, was never used as a, a bombing range. Uh, no, they don't. They have them on Niihau, but uh, this is just Coast Guard. Um, and it's got one beacon is is right here on the summit, and it just you know blinks <laughs> pretty much and tells people don't don't run into the island. So. <laughs>